Hello fellow programmers, this is Pavel with yet another C-Sharp exercise and it's another vending machine app. Uh, we already did one before but this one is going to be a little more complex. It will take uh, user input, it will display a selection of drinks uh, and uh, you know it will simulate the uh, deposit of the money and the, uh, the user selection and all that. So uh, this is a fairly long description. Uh, so uh, feel free to check the uh, description box uh, under the video where I will copy paste all, all of this there. But basically we will be creating a vending machine. Uh, there are a few restrictions. Uh, we will need to, we, the end user should be prompted to keep entering money until enough uh, has been entered. Uh, over here it says the price uh, of all drinks is 150 so in other words user will be entering money or prompted to enter money until uh, $1.50 is entered. Uh, there must be at least three drinks available from the selection on the screen. After a selection has been made, a message will tell the user what uh, he has selected and return any change, uh, you know, like an overpayment. If user deposits $2, he'll get 50 cents back. Furthermore, uh, only 5, 10, 25, and 100 will be accepted as input, like 5 cents, 10, 10 cents, 25, and 100. And um, we are to use two classes. One of them is a drink machine that will have one read-only property for amount of money entered so far. And it will have at least uh, three methods. It will have deposit coin, which will accept one parameter. It will have display drink selections and make drink selections. Uh, again, there could be more. This is the minimum that is required. And um, here's the uh, sample input output. So this the user will be prompted to enter uh, money. And let's say he enters $1.50 or 150 cents. Then the screen with the selection will appear because uh, he entered enough money. Remember, one drink costs dollar fifty, so now he has enough money to choose from. And if he presses D, he will he will display thank you for choosing Diet Coke. And if he paid, let's say, if it was two dollars, then we would also display uh, your change is fifty cents. All right, so let's come uh, to our uh, Visual Studio, and I'm going to start by creating a class. The second class, the first one will obviously be the program, the second class, and they want us to call it a drink machine. All right, so uh, that's our class. And um, I'll start with the uh, cost of drink. That could be our constant uh, because that doesn't change and it's an integer. It's an integer because we are taking uh, calculating everything in cents. We don't calculate $1.50, we calculate 150 so I'll call it cost of drink and it will equal 150. Okay, now um, I need a, a variable for the running total, which basically is, uh, they want us to keep it as a property. So it will be public uh, and it will be an integer running total and it will be get and set it will be automatic property well i'll see about that but for now we can do it this way okay so now uh i will go and uh, oops and create the constructor so public drink machine and i will initialize the running total to zero all right so it's gonna be running total equals zero. Uh, I don't think we need to initialize anything else at this moment. So, um, okay, so they want us to create at least three methods, deposit coin, drink selections, and make drink selection. Okay, display drink selection and make drink selection. Okay, so I'll start with the deposit coin. And I'm going to make it a static because uh, uh, I can call it this way directly without before the uh, class is even created 
uh, you know let me let me just try it without it first let's see how that's gonna uh, work out for for me so deposit uh, coin and it accepts uh, a parameter I'll call it money um, as you can see over here in the instructions it accepts one parameter and that's gonna be the money that is being deposited and now we have to validate uh, remember the the only valid entries are 5 10 25 and 100 if it's none of these or neither uh, if it's neither of these then we got a wrong entry so this is a good job for a switch statement so switch and the thing that we are uh, evaluating is the money that is being deposited so that's our uh, integer to evaluate and the first case is going to be 5 because that's our first and then we, we will have case 10 25 and 100 and of course default so if case case is 5 then uh, correct uh, well, coin was uh, entered so we can uh, add to running total plus equals 5 we add another 5 cents to whatever was already deposited and we'll break out of it so um, we'll do the same for our 10 cents that's a correct uh, correct entry correct input so running total plus equals we will add of course 10 cents to our running total and we will break out of that and as you guessed it's now case 25 and we will add 25 cents and uh, final case is 100 which is a whole dollar so running case plus equals 100 cents now at default uh, if it comes to default then neither of this was uh, entered which means that uh, we have a wrong uh, wrong inputs and I forgot the break statements over here and over here so um, our default I will simply output a console dot uh, right line and I will say invalid entry and I'll break out so um, this is really all there is to it to check the input whether the money the user input uh, was correct or not all right so uh, now we can uh, we can see after everything was input if enough uh, money was uh, you know, no, never mind. I'm I'm jumping all ahead a little of myself. Uh, let's get the next one, which is the display drink drink selection. So I'll copy paste that, and uh, it's going to be our. Oops, I didn't mean that. that. So uh, okay, so it's gonna be a public void, and I'll copy paste that display drink selections. And this will simply display the menu with the drinks. So I will do something like console dot right line and enter just a bunch of stars. You know that's that's just a formatting thing. See, like I'm trying to make something like this, like the little menu over there. So uh, console dot right line. Now this one will have the actual value. And it's going to be C for Coke. Okay, that's, that's our first drink. And um, I will copy paste this for a second and third. So our second one will be P, that's gonna be for Pepsi. And the last one was, I believe, D, D for Diet Coke. So D. Or diet coke and I will simply enter one star over here and now I'll just move it around just so it kind of lines up that's all all right and delete a few of these we don't need that many so this is basically create creates the rectangle with the stars and I'll copy paste the first one and this is the bottom one Okay, now after that, I will uh, display uh, 
an empty line just so that it's uh, not all so, so crowded. So right line, an empty line. And over here, I will simply ask the user to uh, make a selection. So right line, please make your selection. And uh, I will, we will capture that and pass the uh, selection into our last uh, or into our next uh, uh, function or a method. And that's going to be the make drink selection. So I'll copy paste that. And it's going to be, this one can be private because it's not going to be used outside of the class. It's not going to be accessed uh, from anywhere else only from uh, actual this method, the display drink selection method. So I'll make it private and make drink selection. And it expects a selection. Now the selection is a character, either C, P or D. So uh, it accepts character and I'll call it selection. Okay, now when I come back over here, I will ha I have to pass, uh, I will have to call the function and pass the selection. So I will go and I will call the function, make drink selection, make it a call. And now I have to convert to character. And I'm ma making a character because uh, I'm going to use another switch statement and switch statement does not work with string, but it works with character. So I want everything in character so I can use the switch statement to check what input was uh, entered. So convert to character and I will do console dot read line uh, and I'll convert everything to uppercase just to you know if user enters lowercase c it still should uh, sh should work and uh, I have something wrong here console dot read line I think it's supposed to be like that oh come on All right, so <laughs> let me check that so quickly. I'm probably messing up the brackets. And console that read line. I don't need this one. Two upper. Oh, I'm missing the method call with the empty parentheses. And one is extra now. Yeah, there you go. So I'm making the call for this function and I'm passing the character of selection. Now I'm not having a variable assigned to it. I'm simply passing what console read line converted to character and to uppercase. We could make a, a variable called selection over here and we could say selection equals console read line, right? And then pass it directly. But you can also make the call and pass the parameter directly from console read line this way, already converted to character. Okay, so we have that and now over here, uh, I'm going to create a boolean. I have to check if the selection is okay. What if the user enters A, B, or, you know, then th those are not valid selections. So I will do selection okay and I'll initialize it to false. I'll assume user entered something wrong. So now I will simply do our while loop and while not selection okay, in other words, why wrong selection is being entered, uh, which by default, the first, in order for us to run the loop, that's why I have to have this in false. Otherwise, this loop would be skipped already. So uh, this will guarantee that it will run at least one once. We could also do, use do while loop, but uh, I just prefer it this way. So while the selection is wrong, now we will do another switch statement. And this time we will be checking the selection, whether the character entered was is correct, whether it's a valid selection or not. So the first case is a C. It's a character, so it's only it's not the the double quotation, but only single because it's a character. So case C, that means the Coke was uh, selected. So I will do console dot right line. And thank you for choosing a Coke. Okay, and um, now I can do the selection okay equals true. It was a correct selection and I can break out of it. 
So now I will copy paste this for the V and P. Uh, let me do that. So case and case. So this is going to be case P. And over here it will be thank you for choosing Pepsi. Selection is okay. That's a valid selection. And D, thank you for choosing a Diet Coke. And again, that's a valid selection. Now, if the selection is not valid, uh, I'll go to a default and I will do console dot right line invalid selection. Please re enter your selection, whatever. Okay, so now we uh, told the user, okay, selection is wrong. Now we have to wait for him to enter it again. So we will basically do our selection, which we passed over here, and we, we will reassign a new value to it, whatever user enters now. So you know what, I will just, this is going to be the same call. So it's gonna be convert to, so it's going to be convert to character, whatever is red, and we will convert it to uppercase as well. And then check it again, because now we will set the selection OK equals false. So now it will come over here. Ah, it's still false, so here we go again. Uh, uh, check whatever was entered, uh, entered now. This selection now changed. So now it will come to Swiss statement and check it again. Was it C, P, or D? Yes or no? If no, eh, we go again to while loop and check again for C, P, or D. In other words, this way we will not be able to exit this uh, until the user enters a correct value. And we will break out at the end of the default. Okay, so these are our required methods, the, the, the stream, but uh, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to make uh, over here, you know, when the user enters more money, like $2, then he needs to get a change back. Uh, so I'm going to make another private void and I'll call it return change. No arguments. And it will simply check if, I'm um, sorry, I, I Try. Okay, so it will simply check if the running total is greater than 150. Uh, I'm sorry, not 150, but remember we have the constant cost of drink. So I'm gonna use that. So cost of drink. In other words, if we entered more money, then we will simply do console dot right line your change is and it's going to be a currency and what we're going to uh, enter here we'll go the we'll simply enter the running total minus cost of drink in other words cost of drink is 150 let's say running total is 200 so it will say your change is 50 okay so that's uh that's that and uh, now over here when we get the correct selection we can call this function and in other words it will say thank you for choosing coke and your change is but it will only display this if the if user entered more than 150 cents if he entered 150 cents there is no change back it's uh, because the cost of the drink is 150 cents so over here i will call the function return change and uh, I'll call it f for either of the good selection. So it's this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so that's our change. Um, and uh, remember we have the running total. We have to keep adding to it because the maximum that user can enter is 100, but the drink cost 150. So we have to enter 100 and then maybe 25 and 25. We have to keep entering uh, coins. So I will do I will do another public, uh, it's, go it's going to be a static. And I'm going to do it static because uh, I'm going to be looping through it until this becomes true. And uh, you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. So it will return true or false. And it will return true 
if you have enough money and it will return false if you don't so if our running uh, total and it's not taking that uh, because that one uh, alright let's not make it static because it doesn't have an access to it so uh, it wouldn't have an access to the uh, variable to the properties if you're running total is greater or equal to cost of drink yeah we have enough money so return true else we don't have enough money return false not enough money no drink all right so um that should actually maybe even do it um so let me go to my program and i will start uh you know coding the uh the logic to calling to creating an object and all that so uh, I will declare a variable, I call it drink machine, that's my object, equals new drink machine. Okay, so now we have our object and now we can, uh, and uh, remember, now we have to keep depositing money until we get the enough, enough money. So basically, we will be checking we will be calling this. We, we will be uh, calling this as long as there's not enough money. We will be checking the total. So over here, I will do a while not a drink machine, and the the method I'm calling is check total. So un until it returns, as long as it returns false, uh, keep depositing money. So console dot right line. Please enter coin or a dollar bill. And I will just say five, uh, ten, I'm sorry, uh, ten, twenty five, and a hundred. Those are the options. So user enters that. And now what? Now we will, uh, we will call the deposit coin. We will deposit whatever the user entered into the uh, deposit coin to add it to the to our running total all right so um, I will call our uh, drink machine dot uh, deposit coin method and I will pass it expects an integer of money so I will call convert whatever the user enters to integer just like we did with the character console console that read line so this time the user enters something and it is I'm not passing it into any variable I'm passing it in directly as an argument and converting it to an integer so uh, this will loop until we have enough money until there's 150 at least 150 cents and after that once it is a uh, uh, there's enough money we can uh, now simply display the selection and make the selection so after the while loop I will do drink machine dot display selection and remember display selection calls it it itself calls the make drink selection so I don't have to call this method and I can't because I made it private for that reason because uh, I only want to be able to call this method from another method within the a vending machine class all right so um, I will over here I will do console that read line just to pause the screen and let's see if this works what do we get so I'm building it and here is a uh, our sc initial screen please enter coins and I will enter I will enter the wrong one. No, let, let me do a uh, correct one first. So I'll enter 100. All right, and ask for more because 100 is not enough. So it, I'll enter 25. Hey, it still needs more. So I'll enter 100. So that makes $2.25. That's enough to buy a drink. So now we should display the screen, which we do. Uh, C for Coke. So yeah, I'll enter C. And if I ent enter C, now I, it should display, thank you for ordering Coke or whatever the message was. And your change is uh, 75 cents.
because I paid two two twenty five and the cost of the drink is one fifty. And it says thank you for choosing Coke. Your change is seventy five dollars. All right. So, uh, <laughs> and that's because we are calculating everything uh, over here. Uh, when we do the uh, calculation, we need to change everything to uh, to cents. This is basically uh, a currency is going to return like dollars. So I will multiply everything by 0 0.01 to get cents. 0 0.01 because we are working with cents, not whole dollars. Okay, so let's try that again. I'll enter 100 and another 100. So now I should get 50 cents back after I order, let's say, Diet Pepsi. And it says, thank you for choosing Diet Coke. Uh, your change is 50 cents. So now let's check uh, what it does when we do wrong entry. So how about I enter 15 cents? Now invalid entry, enter coins, 5, 10, 25, or 100. So how about uh, 25? That's correct. How about 110? That's incorrect. No, okay, so 100. So now we have $1.25 in there. And I will do another 25 cents, which is valid. Now we get the screen. And I'll enter wrong uh, R, for example. Invalid selection, please re-enter. I will do T, invalid. I will do a number, 6, invalid. So I will do P for Pepsi. And now it says, thank you for choosing Pepsi. It doesn't tell me anything about uh, change because I entered $1.50 altogether. Uh, so there is no change to be given back to me. Okay, so um, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. And a bunch of switch uh, switch statements, you know, one property. It's an automatic property. Uh, the only thing that really is uh, kind of making it a little complicated maybe is the while loops, you know, to make sure that we loop until the user enters correct uh, correct value, whether it is for the drink selection or for the coin selection like w w the coin deposit but if it coin deposit we are looping over here in the in the main program with the uh, drink selection we make that loop directly in this in the method it's kind of like a self-checking so you can do it either way it works fine you know we could do we could do this one as well uh, we can we could do both while loops over here or both while while loops within its uh, appropriate methods but you know uh, this way now you can see you know how did how it works in uh, both cases and you can choose whichever you like best i usually prefer it to be kind of self-contained uh, but since there is no parameter to be passed over here it's easy to check it directly in the in the main method so um all right, so that's, that's that. That's the vending machine with the user input. Hope it was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Take care.